Hey Taras, so this is your uh, feedback for essay number 9 and 10 um, of your writing so far. Really well done, so we're, we've got really far which is brilliant and obviously it shows that you are really really trying to improve your writing which is perfect. Um, lots of people don't uh, spend this much time um, improving their writing so it just shows how great your work ethic is and it will it will pay off in the end fantastic so um your essay number nine let's have a look through that one um so you're talking here about uh, green energy okay and i can see already that you've got a good structure happening here so you've got your introduction two key points or two main paragraphs followed by your um conclusion at the end okay so let's uh, look from the introduction then so you've written the proponents of eco energy development are convinced of decreased costs and sustainable environment while some experts point out the possible repercussions of their opinion such as lack of energy security <laughs> the aim of this essay is to contrast both sides using examples from the UK Statistics House and Denmark. Because of the renewable nature of green energy, this essay contends that it is apparently beneficial for our society. Okay then, good. So we started with the proponents of eco-energy. Okay, good. Um, we could use synonyms here. So instead of proponents, we could use something like supporters or advocates of eco-energy development are convinced of decreased costs and sustainable environment okay good while well, some experts point out the possible repercussions of their opinion such as lack of energy security okay good so you are showing here that we have um the two sides of the argument okay so the idea of decreased costs and sustainable environment whereas the um, those who are against it uh, believe in the kind of lack of energy security. Okay, well done. Uh, the aim of this essay is to contrast with an N. So C-O-N-T-R-A-S-T. Both sides using examples from the UK Statistics House and Denmark. Great, so you've got some concrete examples here as well. Uh, because of the renewable nature of green energy, this essay contends that it is apparently beneficial for our society. Okay then. So in your next paragraph, um, you're talking about how energy stations can sometimes be unreliable. Okay, you've started with a really great conditional sentence, a third conditional there. If governments had completely replaced old energy stations with eco-friendly ones, then countries would most likely have had to deal with the interruptions of electricity supply. Great work, well done. Due to the type of green energy, the last one undoubtedly depends on natural resources. Okay, um, here... I think we should take out the last one. So due to the type of green energy, um, or perhaps we would say due to the nature of green energy, it depends on natural resources such as wind and sunlight which cannot be controlled. Okay. As a result, the temporary lack of these elements may bring all green energy stations to a halt, good, having a negative impact on social institutions left without utilities. Okay good um here instead of without utilities uh, it would be more accurate to say left without power okay uh, to cite an example well done fantastic the government of denmark has recently faced a challenge to provide electricity to the hospital in a small town which was supplied by a wind turbine because of the unpredictable changes it changes in weather it was not powered by wind good Therefore, it is possible to state beyond doubt that green energy stations sometimes are prone to unstable functioning, yet they have many positive sides. Okay, well done. So just those changes to the middle to make it slightly clearer in places, but overall, a really clear paragraph. Fantastic. 
So next you've used um, conversely, which is really good, you're signposting your reader here uh, to make sure that you're talking about um, the opposite uh, side of the situation. So conversely, eco-energy is advantageous as it provides environmentally sustainable solutions for the planet while keeping minimum expenses for maintenance. Okay, good. People habitually do not pay for water or sunlight power. Hence, it may be required only initial outlays to establish green energy stations. Okay, that sentence is slightly confusing because when you say people habitually do not pay for water or sunlight power, it sounds like you're talking about the past. Okay, so um, uh, saying that people never pay for their bills. Whereas what we want to say is that with eco-energy, people do not have to pay for water or sunlight power. Okay, so we want to make that clearer there. Um, so maybe keep that one to one sentence. And then we could say, instead, comma, only initial outlays are required to establish green energy, E-N-E-R-G-Y, stations. Okay, next bit. By reducing the expenditures of the companies which produce electricity, citizens will receive unreasonable prices for utility supply. Mm -hmm. Sorry, <laughs> we'll receive reasonable prices for utility supply. Well done, good. Uh, furthermore, even if the manageable cost of eco-energy is a significant argument, Many experts are convinced that reduced air and land pollution are the most important advantages. Well done, fantastic. For example, a developmental study by the UK Statistics House has found that the water in oceans with an S around the country contains 10% fewer contaminants, so without by, contains 10% fewer contaminants since the scalable replacement of old energy sources with water turbines. Well done, really good, a really solid example there, fantastic. Thus, comma, this essay persuades that green energy is often a viable solution. Um, instead, this essay argues Okay, or we could say, uh, thus it can be said that green energy is often a viable solution to reduce costs and increase environmental sustainability. Then we have your conclusion. Um, so to re recapitulate from the evidence and arguments given. All right, so here, um, perhaps start with to conclude, comma, from the evidence and arguments given, the development of eco-energy has negative sides as well as positive outcomes. Hence, it is a controversial topic. Uh, yes, okay, good. Personally, I advocate the idea to establish more stations to produce eco-energy because they are inexpensive to maintain and use renewable resources. Well done, really good. Okay, so a good um, conclusion there. Uh, you've made it very clear and also you've ended with a personal response to the situation, which is always a good way to, to round off an essay. Really well done on that one. Um, as we said, it's largely some of your sentence structure. Okay, so go through the corrections on this one and make a note of the ones that uh, have come up there. And um, the best thing to do is to learn those for when you do uh, more essay writing. And that will then eliminate those mistakes. Um, but really very good work. Fantastic. Next, we have your essay number 10. Okay, so the letter to the next door neighbour who owns a small dog and that barks throughout the day and the night. And you're writing a letter to your neighbour. Um asking or requesting for something to be done, okay? And you've got those three points there that you need to include in your letter. 
Okay, so first off, looking at this, it is clear that you have a good structure. It's clearly a letter, which is brilliant. Okay, so we're starting with dear, we're ending with um, signing off at the end, so that's good. Okay, so dear Mr. Adam, good, I'm contacting you regarding inconvenience caused to me by the pet in your flat. Okay, my name is Taris Bond, and I'm living next to your apartment. Okay, so, um, let's just go back to this part, inconvenience caused to me. Okay, um, what we could say instead, so I'm contacting you regarding the inconvenience caused by your pet. Okay, or by your dog. Alright. Uh, my name is Taris Bond and I'm living next to your apartment. Uh, instead of saying living next to your apartment, which is very, um, it's clear, but it's a bit of a roundabout way of saying this. So we could say, my name is Taris Bond and I live next door. Okay, or I am your neighbour. Okay, and the next bit then, so I would like to inform you that this dog is truly noisy and it disturbs all the citizens in neighbour flats. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with this one, um, I would like to inform you that this dog is very noisy, okay, or really noisy, and it disturbs, uh, instead of all the citizens, which is a kind of direct translation, instead would say disturbs everyone in neighbour neighbouring flats, ing, neighbouring flats, okay, or to make it even simpler we could say the dog is really or very noisy and it disturbs all the neighbours, okay, the problem occurs throughout the day and even sometimes at night your dog suddenly starts to bark, okay, this is good. Uh, thus, my family and I are sleep deprived for a long time. Okay, um, because we've got for a long time, we need to use a different tense here. Okay, so we need to use uh, have been sleep deprived. So it's present perfect there. Thus, my family and I have been sleep deprived for a long time because there is an impact on the present. Alright, so you have been sleep deprived for a long time and we require you to put measures in place as quickly, quickly as possible. Okay, good. Uh, next one, in reference to the regulation imposed by the City Council a year ago, any kind of loud noise after 10pm is illegal. So we suggest you to keep your pets in a different home, possibly at suburban private house. Okay, so be careful with this one. Um, the start is good, so in reference to the regulation imposed by the City Council a year ago, good. Any kind of loud noise after 10 pm is illegal. So we suggest, uh, so we could say here, we suggest you perhaps, P E R H A P S, you perhaps keep your pet in a different home. Possibly in a suburban, comma, private house. Alternatively, you can visit a veterinary clinic. So veterinary, and um, be careful of the spelling here. V-E-T-E-R-I-N-A-R-Y. So visit a veterinary clinic to consult with professionals how to make your pet to be quiet at night. So for this sentence, um, so alternatively you can visit a veterinary clinic to consult professionals. Um, to make this a more kind of friendly tone or nice respectful style like it says in the instructions, I would say maybe alternatively you can visit a veterinary clinic to speak to professionals about how to make your pet quieter at night. Okay. Uh, if you decide to ignore my letter, 
I will be forced to write a complaint, with a T, complaint, to the City Council. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. Yours sincerely, Taris Bond. Okay. All right then. So, um, if we just look at the the ending to the letter there, um, yours sincerely is um quite formal. Okay, yours sincerely is good. Uh, we could possibly think of alternatives like kind regards, Taris Bond. Um, because we want to have a nice style here, so um, although we want to get our point across, we also want to make sure that it is a, a nice, um, kind of a, a friendly tone. Um, uh, the last sentence here, if you decide to ignore my letter, I will be forced to write a complaint to the City Council. This is good. Okay, um, perhaps there are ways that we could make it slightly less formal, so to, to still have that nice style. So we could say, for example, um, if I don't receive a reply or any action, I will have no choice but to write a complaint to the City Council. Okay, that way we're using um, words that are not quite so strong so or negative, so ignore my letter and forced to write a complaint. If we say something like, I will have no choice, it creates a nicer tone. Um, it shows that we, we don't want to send the letter, um, but we won't have a choice but to send it. Okay. So overall, a really good letter there. You've got all of the key points in there. Um, you've described things very well. I would say just um, uh, have another look through some of the vocabulary used and think, is there a way of making it um, sound more natural? Because your language level is obviously very good. It's just about getting that kind of natural uh, English in there. So like when we said, it disturbs the neighbours. Okay, or um, to speak to professionals. Okay, but a really fantastic piece of work, really well done. You should be very proud of yourself. Great work.